Hey everybody, Carl Shoof here from creativecodingclub.com and today I want to break down my wraparound effect that you see here using three different techniques of GSAP, all right? They're all extremely different, but they give you the same similar result, all right? And I just love this effect because there's really quite a bit going on. You'll notice that the slime smoothly moves to the right, back to the left, and then off screen to the right while scaling up and down, all right? And due to GSAP's awesome features, you can really have the precise control that you need to choreograph all this, all right? And many times I get people asking me, Carl, can you show me how to build this full page award-winning website? And although I do love showing those effects, I also like these smaller examples that show you the nitty gritty details of the GSAP API. So sit back and watch all the three different ways I create this animation, and I bet you'll learn something new about GSAP. Here we go. So here's our first example using the slow-mo ease. And you're going to notice that we have a timeline here with two, two tweens in it, okay? And the first tween is going to handle the animation along the x-axis. And if you look closely again, you'll see that when we start off, the slime moves to the right, and then it moves back to the left, and then slowly keeps going to the right. And this is all handled in one tween controlling the X value with a slow-mo ease. We write slow here for short when we're using it. Now the reason it goes backwards is because of this power value right here is greater than one. Now I can't do a complete lesson, but if you go to the GreenSock Ease Visualizer and select Slow, you're going to see it's a very unique ease that has a linear portion in the middle, which means that the animation will run at a constant rate of change, okay? And if we take the power parameter and set it to one, you'll see that it becomes a flat line where there's no change at all in the center, okay? So this is how you can get an animation to stop midway. Well, what's very interesting here is when the power goes above one to something like two, you'll notice that the animation moves backwards during the linear portion, okay? So I'm tapping into this unique behavior of the slow ease in order to get the slime to move back and forth. And one of the best ways to see how this works is to isolate this tween here. So I'm going to comment out the tween on the scaling and now you'll see we just have that back and forth motion, okay? And take a look at how it eases in and out really nicely, okay? But there is a constant rate going through the linear portion where it moves backwards. And now if we activate the tween on the scale, you will see that the slime grows and shrinks, okay? So it starts small, grows, and then shrinks down. And what we're doing is we're animating to a scale of two here using these slow ease parameters. What I wanna point out is this last parameter which is set to true here, which is what we call yo-yo mode. Back in the ease visualizer, I'm going to set the power down to something more normal like 0.4 so that we'll see more of a typical slow-mo ease here. Now, if we set yo-yo mode to true, Look what happens. The curve flattens out at the end value up here, okay, and stays static. So here's the starting value. We're gonna shoot up to the ending value, stay at that value, and then shoot back down to the start. So when we run, notice the ball shoots up, stays there, and then comes back down. So what we have here is a very unique situation where we have a single tween where the target ends exactly where it begins, okay, without having a repeat or a yo-yo or any of that. So this is what we're employing on the scale. We're going to shoot up to our maximum scale of two, stay there for a while, and then go back down to the starting scale. And when you run these two tweens at the same time, watch what happens. We get the really slick wraparound effect and it's super smooth, it sort of eases in and out, shrinks up and down, and uh, really hard to match any other way, which is what I thought until I found GSAP's keyframes. Now, although they are publicly available, I almost feel like GSAP's keyframe syntax is sort of a secret, okay? But the short story is, is that as of GSAP 3.9, you can use a semi-familiar keyframe syntax if you come from a CSS background, okay? And with 
keyframes, what you can do is set how you want your properties to be at certain percentages of the animation, okay? So what this allows us to do is to create a single tween that almost appears as if it's a sequence, okay? Because just like the prior example, we have the slime moving back and forth and shrinking up and down and doing some cool things all at the same time in one single two tween here. Now, similar to the other example, sometimes it's best to isolate certain properties to see what's happening, all right? You'll see that we are using these keyframe property values here to set things like the scale and X values at certain percentages. Now, if I just comment out the scale ones really quick, this is now just showing the movement along the X axis. And using GS Dev Tools, I can scrub through and show you that we're moving to the right, back to the left, and then again to the right and fully off stage, all right? So that's the basic motion along the X axis. And then for the scaling, we're just plopping in a few extra keyframes here where we're going to be changing the scale at certain key times and we get this really nice smooth animation once again that pretty much matches what I did with the slow ease. And I think it's pretty neat that we can do all this in one tween. And one of the cooler things about keyframes is that you can have multiple items following the same keyframes in a single tween by just adding a stagger, okay? So this demo has multiple elements with a class of slime, and they're all following these keyframes here, all right? Typically, to have multiple elements do something like this, you would have to loop through all of them and create animations for each one, but right now, it's one tween with a keyframes property and a stagger property. How neat is that? I just love it. And to wrap up, I want to show you a bonus third way to accomplish the wraparound effect, which is using SVG. Here in Boxy SVG, I created this path here for my slime to follow. So over in CodePen, you'll see here that I have my SVG, and when I play, you'll notice that the slime is following the path. This is because I have a two tween here that targets my slime, and I'm using the motion path plugin to animate my slime along my path and have it perfectly centered, which is this path that I drew here. Now, at the same time that the slime is following the path, I'm also doing a scale tween here using the slow-mo ease. So I'm sort of combining two of the techniques here, okay? So this works really quite well. I don't know if I like it as much as the others, but a huge advantage here is that it is SVG, so it's totally scalable, all right? When I resize, everything just looks beautiful, all right? Now, I may have to play with the timing and the easing here. I did it pretty quick, but you know what? I'm pretty happy with it, and this is definitely a valid way to get this effect. Now, I know you may be thinking, but Carl, when am I ever going to animate a slime like this? Well, this has been one of my most favorite text effects, all right? I just love what it can do when you put some text on the screen, all right? This is not something you're going to see every day, and it's a great way to spice up the text that you have on your site or in your ads. I'm always amazed with how many ways you can tap into the GSAP API. And if you want to create amazing effects, you really have to master the fundamentals. I love using short animations like this to teach you all the nitty gritty details that are gonna help you create flexible and powerful animations. And I have over 240 lessons for you ready to guide you through the best parts of the GSAP API. I'll show you everything from GSAP basics, easing, advanced sequencing techniques, scroll-driven animations, SVG animations, and so much more. So head on over to creativecodingclub.com today and check out my comprehensive GSAP training.